Celluloid, first produced in the mid-19th century by dissolving nitrocellulose in alcohol and letting the solvent evaporate, was the world's first commercial plastic. To make it pliable, camphor was added as a plasticizer. <clears throat> this imparted a smell that was not favorable, so the industry welcomed a family of odorless compounds called phthalates that were first made in the 1920s and proved to be a very effective replacement for camphor. They served the same purpose when polyvinyl chloride, PVC, was introduced in 1931 and the PVC and phthalate industries proceeded to boom in parallel. Later, phthalates were also found to be effective solvents for chemicals used in many personal care items, such as shampoos and perfumes, with their use in products ranging from food packaging and children's toys to cosmetics and medical tubing. It's little wonder that analytical chemists with their sophisticated equipment can now detect phthalates in the environment as well as in our bloodstream. That raises the question of possible effects on health. That question began to be answered in the late 1990s when phthalates were found to have hormone-like properties and were labeled as endocrine disruptors. They were found to be anti-androgenic, meaning that they can interfere with the production and bioavailability of testosterone, the main male sex hormone. This has been linked to diminished sperm count, deteriorated sperm quality, and a higher incidence of genital tract abnormalities, such as hypospadias, in which the opening of the urethra is not located at the tip of the penis. A higher concentration of phthalates in maternal blood has also been linked with a shorter anogenital distance in male offspring, a measure that correlates with lower testosterone levels. With increasing attention being paid to gender dysphoria, which is a sense of unease due to a mismatch between biological sex and gender identity, there's interest in exploring whether exposure to phthalates early in life may be a contributing factor. About 5% of young Americans view their gender as being different from that assigned at birth. To explore this phenomenon, researchers in China tested the urine of school children for phthalates on repeated occasions and evaluated their masculine and feminine traits based on the children's sex role inventory scale, which is composed of questions that are accepted by psychologists as reflective of gender identity. They also determined the timing of puberty. Analysis of the data revealed that in boys with early onset of puberty, increased amounts of phthalates in their urine correlate with increased scores of femininity. The researchers conclude that exposure to phthalates may play a role in gender dysphoria and that attempts should be made to reduce such exposure. It should be mentioned, however, that phthalates are just one example of endocrine disruptors, of which there are many, bisphenol A, nonophenol, some pesticides, perfluoroalkyl substances, fire retardants, and phytoestrogens in flax and soy all have hormone-like effects and could, in theory, also affect gender identity, as can children's play behavior and genetics. It's a complicated business. And that for today is our Kappa Joe.